My name's Kevin, and I'm an alcoholic. And no, I'm not in the wrong meeting. I've been in the AA program for 14 months, and now being immersed in it, I see so many parallels between the spirituality of their program and my practice in Sun Buddhism. In fact, being in that program uh, is what led me back to being in my practice here. In AA, we all know and hear that acceptance is one of the most difficult but important things to understand in order to achieve long-lasting recovery. For alcoholics, this means learning to relinquish our ego, our desire to control, and realize our limitations in our day-to-day -day situations. Actually, acceptance is one of the most frequent subjects discussed in the big book of AA, and probably the most quoted in all of really recovery literature. There are several quotes from the big book that explore this theme, but my favorite and one that I have laminated and read each morning is from page 17. It goes like this. And acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing, or situation some fact of my life unacceptable to me. And I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Until I could accept my alcoholism, I could not stay sober. Unless I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in the world as what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. My recovery is very new, only a little over 14 months. I remember in the beginning, I was told by my sponsor that this program was about acceptance and surrendering, but I couldn't really submit to that. I found myself picking and choosing what I wanted to accept, what I didn't want to which is nothing more than my mind and will wanting to manipulate and control the moment to moment situation. As the days went on, my relationships were not getting better, what a shocker. And things at home eventually came to a head. I was asked to leave because I was the source of so much unhappiness and sorrow, but I wasn't drinking. So what the hell was going on? Since that time, I've come home and also come to know that it's only when I allow myself to live in the moment, perceiving what is happening, not judgmentally, that I can begin to understand the true concept of acceptance and hence move towards true happiness. For me, the trick is to remember that this involves not just a logical acceptance of what's happening around me, but also to have emotional acceptance for all those in my life. For me, this involves practicing Zen and keeping it close throughout the day. In Buddhism, <clears throat> mindfulness and acceptance go hand in hand because they center around being present in the moment and allowing the world to be the way that it is, free of judgment and control. But even more so, in the Buddhist tradition, mindfulness and awareness practices will lead us truly to knowing ourselves. The self-awareness can lead to unconditionally accepting ourselves just as we are. In Sanskrit, this is called Maitri, and it translates as loving kindness or unconditional friendliness. Loving kindness means that we can see our own experiences clearly and also let whatever we see be what it is without pushing it away. Notice this is not the same as judging our experiences, either good or bad. Accepting a person, place, or thing, or situation means that we see what it is, which is not the same as approval or disapproval. Zen master Song San used to say that as a practice, Zen meditation brings us to our primary point, just don't know. He often stated, I talk about primary point. What is primary point? When you have a scale and there's nothing being weighed, the indicator points to zero. You put something on it and the pointer swings to one pound. 
you take it off, the pointer goes back to zero. This is primary point. After you find your primary point, then good feelings come, bad feelings come. So your pointer swings in one direction or the other, but this doesn't matter. Don't check it, don't hold on to it. And the feeling is over with the pointer swings back to zero. Just like the scale, our experience of the world is at times tainted by interpretations based on the feelings, knowledge, and conditioning of our past experiences. Ever get cut off while driving and yell at the driver, though they can't usually hear you? Something along the lines of, you stupid ass. And they're not just stupid in that moment, but for all of their lives, right? But how do we know that this person isn't rushing to the deathbed of a loved one? This conditioning process is known as the ladder of inference. And it's why we react and jump to conclusions from situation to situation, time and time again. We could easily become attached to this cycle. Then the whole world is no longer a flower, but rather on fire. Zen helps me to break this cycle, stay sober, and be loving to those that I care for, to not react, but rather respond in the mo most moments by being in the present. In the moment, letting go of my attachments to previous assumptions or beliefs. The key to my Zen practice is conditioning myself to return back and refocusing my attention on the present moment as soon as I realize I've drifted away. I accomplish this by doing practice in 15 minute sessions twice per day, in the morning and the afternoon. I find these sessions are like pressing the clear button on my calculator. I can begin to add or subtract numbers, and then one plus one equals two, and not 108. That's what we're doing when we sit zazen, hear a bell, or listen to a kangan. We are practicing being in this moment and keeping our primary point. So keep your Zen calculators close by, hit the clear button often, and your purpose will also be clear. Thank you for the opportunity to be of service.